Hey there team, welcome to another lore recap of the Warcraft series. We've hit new territory for me. I actually stopped playing WoW after Wrath of the Lich King and didn't fully return until Legion. And let me tell you, there is a lot of stuff that happens in Cataclysm. A cataclysmic amount of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so bear with me now more than ever that I will not be covering everything that happens in Cataclysm, but I will be covering everything important that happens and then some. I'll be cutting some things here and changing some stuff there, all in order to help the story flow better and to keep this video at a reasonable length. But rest assured, this will still be all the lore you need to know about World of Warcraft's third expansion, Cataclysm. Now, let's jump backwards in time for a bit. Thousands of years ago, the five dragon flights were placed in charge of guarding and guiding Azeroth, and each of the dragon flights were led by a powerful aspect. Nose Dormu, the timeless one of the bronze dragon flight, Alex Straza, the life binder of the red, Malagos, the spell weaver of the blue, Ysera, the dreamer of the green, and Neltherion the Earth Warder of the Black Dragonflight. For centuries, the Aspects and their flights would help shape and protect the world of Azeroth from all manner of threats, until the War of the Ancients 10,000 years before the events of World of Warcraft. Neltharion had grown bitter about his charge, and his growing resentment let the old gods that were buried beneath the world seep into his mind. And over the years, Neltharion would begin to scheme and plot and become paranoid of even his own dragonflight. The whispers of the old gods convinced him that there was a plausible future where an Altharian and a flight loyal to him would rule over all of Azeroth, and even allow him to enslave the other aspects. With these new goals in mind, Altharian begins to create the Dragon Soul, a weapon of immense power. When the War of the Ancients began and the Burning Legion attacked Azeroth, Altharian convinced the aspects and the members of their flights to give up some of their essence to power the Dragon Soul. What the dragons didn't know at the time was that Neltharion didn't add his own essence to the weapon, making him the only dragon capable of wielding it, and that Neltharion intended to use the Dragon Soul against all living creatures. During a battle against the Burning Legion, Neltharion unleashes the power of the Dragon Soul destroying thousands of demons and also night elves. The aspect then does a quick heel turn and demands all the dragons and mortal races bow down to him and him alone. Malagos responds by leading his blue dragon flight in an attack to stop Neltharion, but the dragon soul is used against them, wiping out almost the entirety of the blue flight. And then the black aspect uses the dragon soul to scatter the rest of the dragons, killing several hundred of them in the process. The more Neltharion used the Dragon Soul, and the more whispers he heard, the more his body started to deform, cracking and breaking apart with magma and flame flowing out of him. Neltharion renamed the Dragon Soul to the Demon Soul, and he renamed himself from Neltharion to Deathwing, the Destroyer. While recuperating from using the Demon Soul, Deathwing had goblin smiths create armor plates of adamantium and had them bolted onto his body to keep himself from falling apart. During the War of the Ancients, Malfurion's Stormrage was able to steal the Demon Soul from Deathwing, and after the war was over, the other aspects in Malfurion sealed the powers of the weapon up so that Deathwing was no longer capable of using it, and Malfurion hid the Demon Soul away so that Deathwing could never find it. Deathwing was too injured to keep fighting all the mortal races, and so he retreated away, going into a deep slumber that lasted for thousands of years. By Warcraft 2, Deathwing had awoken, and he had a scheme to help the orcs. He led the Dragonmaw clan of orcs to where the Demon Soul was buried, and instructed them on how to use it, and directed them to excellent targets to use their new toy on. Those targets being the Red Dragonflight, the protectors of the land surrounding the Demon Soul. Alex Straza and her dragons were then captured by the orcs, using their newly acquired demon soul to do so, and then the dragons were forced to fight for the Dragon Maw clan. Deathwing would pop up here and there throughout Warcraft 2, mainly on the side of the orcs, but after Warcraft 2 ended, he had one more scheme left to hatch. Alex Straza and the demon soul were being held in the ruined dwarf city of Grimbatal. 
Deathwing attempted to lure the Dragon Maw clan out of the city and take control of it for himself. But due to the interference of a couple of heroes, the plan didn't work out so well. Instead, the three non-enslaved aspects showed up at Grim Batal to fight him, the demon soul was destroyed, Alex Straza was freed, and the power drained from the aspects all those years ago returned to them. The four aspects beat back Deathwing, severely wounding him and chasing him into hiding. Deathwing retreated from Azeroth to the elemental realm called Deep Home, where he would nurse his wounds for a time. Cho'Gal was considered to be one of the first double-headed ogres of Draenor. He served Gul'dan as his right-hand man, right-hand ogre, and was the only non-orc member of the Shadow Council. Cho'Gal and his Twilight's Hammer clan defected from the Horde along with Gul'dan to head for the Tomb of Sargeras. After Gul'dan's death there, however, Cho'Gal and the Twilight's Hammer fled, setting sail for Kalimdor. For years, Cho'Gal and his Twilight's Hammer clan hid away in southern Kalimdor, where they grew more in power and more in madness, succumbing to the will of Cthulhu and the Old Gods. His clan turned into a cult, a cult fueled by the power of the Old Gods themselves. By the end of the war against the Lich King, thousands of denizens of Azeroth now served the Twilight's Hammer. With Cho'Gal and his cult having been sowing the seeds for the Old Gods' return for years, and now, finally, the elements of Azeroth have begun to shift and crack, and the hour of the old gods, the hour of twilight, is nigh. After the war against the Lich King was over, Thrall noticed that the elements of Azeroth were acting up. He went off to investigate the elemental disturbances and found out that a cataclysmic event was about to happen, one that could shatter Azeroth in a similar way that Draenor was shattered into Outland. Thrall decides to step away from the Horde and joins the Shamans of the Earth and Ring in order to help balance out the elements. He calls on Garrosh Hellscream, hero of the Northrend campaign, to be his replacement as Warchief of the Horde. Afterwards, Thrall sets off to the Maelstrom, the epicenter of the soon-to-be Cataclysm. After all the years Deathwing had remained in Deep Home, recovering, until the Twilight's Hammer found him. The old gods worshipping cult began to serve Deathwing, and heralded him as the avatar of the old gods. They then grafted new Elementium plates onto Deathwing to help keep the dragon from falling apart even more. With the recent old god activity of late, the awakening of Cthulhu and Ankaraj, and yogg saron and Oduar, the power of the old gods and their madness had amplified Deathwing's own by an incredible amount and Deathwing broke out of Deep Home and through the Maelstrom, destroying the pillar that kept the elemental planes separated from Azeroth. Deathwing began to wreak havoc on the world along with massive disasters caused by the elemental disruption, including earthquakes, tidal waves, floods, and volcanic eruptions that devastated and ravaged Azeroth, reshaping it forever and killing thousands. Deathwing then recruits some of the elemental lords to aid him, since they all served the old gods in millennia past, and Deathwing goes about setting up plans to bring about the Hour of Twilight, the final act that will summon the old gods and all of their powers back into Azeroth. His black dragon flight is focused on creating twilight dragons and reinforcing the twilight's hammer cult. The elemental lords are laying siege to Kalimdor and its warriors, and Deathwing himself tries to recruit the blue dragon flight to his cause. See, now that Malagos is dead, there needs to be a new aspect to lead the blue dragons. Malagos' son, Aragos, had plans to take up the position of his father, but there was another candidate, one who didn't side with Malagos during the Nexus War of Northrend so he looked much more appealing to the other dragons. Caligos had openly resisted the will of the previous aspect and sided with Alex Straza during the war. Not only was Calic popular with the dragons of other flights, but he was also very popular amongst the remaining blues as well. In order to beat his competition, Aragos allied himself with Deathwing. The plan was to use Deathwing and his Twilight Drakes as a way to force the blues to accept him as their leader, and once made aspect, Aragos would use the combined forces of Blue and Twilight Dragons to kill Alex Straza. However, his plans ultimately failed, and it was Caligos who was given the powers of the Aspect. 
Argos' failure would lead to his death at the hands of Deathwing's forces since the Blue Dragon was considered useless to the cause, and the remaining Blue Dragons, led by their new aspect, joined the other dragon flights in their war against Deathwing in the Hour of Twilight. With Thrall gone and Garrosh now taking up the role of Warchief, the Horde started to change. Because of the incident at the Wrathgate, the Alliance were not keen on trading with the Horde, nor were they okay with the Horde using Ashenvale Forest as a source for lumber. A group of Cenarian Circle Druids were called to Ashenvale to resolve the matter, and while working on a peace treaty, a group of Twilight's Hammer Assassins, disguised as Horde soldiers, butchered most of the Druids, framing Garrosh and his orcs. Outraged by what he thought were Garrosh's actions, Cairn, chieftain of the Tarin, challenged Garrosh to mock Gora, which is a battle for the title of Warchief. The orc upped the stakes, and made it a battle to the death. Both leaders had their weapons blessed, but unknown to either Bloodhoof or Cowscream, Garrosh's axe was laced with poison. When Garrosh and Cairn fought, Eventually, to the death, Garrosh came out the victor. Shortly afterwards, it was revealed that poison was used, in order to ensure Cairn's death. Garrosh was furious about the dishonorable way he had won, and he rallied the Horde forces against those responsible. Cairn's son, Bane, took over as chieftain of the Tarin, and while Bane and the Tarin were not going to abandon the Horde, resentment for Garrosh began to stir. By the start of the Cataclysm expansion, the Alliance have declared war on the Horde, mainly due to the believed assassinations in Ashenvale, and several members inside the Horde began to disagree with how Garrosh was running things. Garrosh led the Horde assault on the Twilight Highlands to help push back against the Twilight's Hammer invasion there, as well as their creation of Twilight Dragons. During the assault, Garrosh recruited the Dragonmaw clan that still resided near Grim Batal into the Horde filling his ranks with even more orcs loyal to him. The Twilight Highlands also served as the base of operations for the Twilight's Hammer, Cho Gaul leading them from the Bastion of Twilight, the main command center for their cult, as well as the main breeding ground for the Twilight Dragonflight, Deathwing's prized lineage. The forces of the Twilight's Hammer were pushed back by the dwarves and orcs of the surrounding lands, along with the Red Dragonflight. Eventually, the Bastion of Twilight fell, and its dual-headed commander fell with it. And now, not technically the end of the Twilight's Hammer cult, they were still incredibly prevalent throughout the planet, it was a serious blow, losing many of its main leaders, as well as its source for the creation of additional Twilight Dragons. While all that's going down, War Chief Garrosh Hellscream commanded Sylvanas Windrunner and her Forsaken to conquer the land of Gilneas for the Horde. The last anyone heard from the Gilneans is that the feral worgen they summoned to fight the Scourge, all the way back in Warcraft 3, had turned against them, with several citizens of Gilneas being inflicted with the curse of the worgen, including the king of Gilneas, Gen Greymane. The arrival of Night Elf Druids helped ease the curse letting the newly made worgen gain control over themselves and not turn into feral beasts. Unfortunately, the Cataclysm caused an earthquake which broke the Great Gilnean Wall, letting the Forsaken army march right into the country. The Gilnean humans and worgen try to fight off the Forsaken, but they are outmatched, and Liam Greymane, Prince of Gilneas, is killed by Sylvanas Windrunner herself. Gen and most of what remains of his people fled Gilneas and were granted sanctuary in the night off capital of Darnassus, leaving their home in ruins. With that, the Gilneans officially joined the Alliance and pledged their services in stopping the Old Gods, as well as stopping the Horde and their war. Alakir the Windlord and his Air Elementals were also summoned to attack Azeroth. The Cataclysm revealed the magically protected land of Odum, which is where Alakir began attacking, with hopes of acquiring a powerful and ancient titan weapon. However, thanks to the Explorers League, the Air Elementals, the Twilight's Hammer Cult, and Alakir himself were stopped. Meanwhile, the goblins of the Bilgewater Cartel have lost their home island of Kazan due to the Cataclysm. After running into Thrall while he was on his way to the Maelstrom, they were offered a place in the Horde after which they headed straight for Ashara right outside of Orgrimmar, where the goblins set up shop and began assisting the Horde with all of its mechanical and business needs. 
And while that's going down, in an attempt to figure out what was happening to Azeroth and the elements, King Magni Bronzebeard performed a ritual to contact the planet itself. The ritual worked a little too well, turning Magni into part of the planet. With the King of Ironforge currently a statue, his daughter, formerly Moira Bronzebeard, made an attempt at the throne. Moira, along with a singular clan of Dark Iron Dwarves, loyal to her, moved into the city to make a claim for ruling Ironforge. However, the Bronzebeard Dwarves of Ironforge, as well as the neighboring Wildhammer Dwarves, rejected the claim, and a compromise was issued. Now the once empty seat of power is shared between the three clans, known as the Council of Three Hammers. With Moira Tharazan representing the Dark Iron Dwarves, Falstead Wildhammer representing the Wildhammers, and Muradin Bronzebeard representing the Bronzebeards. And just off the coast of Dwarven-owned land, the underwater region of Vashir has risen out of the depths, and while on their way to war with each other, a bunch of Horde and Alliance ships were dragged down into the depths of this new territory. Naga, in service to the Old Gods, have set up shop in the ruins of what was once ancient Night Elf land. The Naga capture Horde and Alliance soldiers in an attempt to aid the Twilight's Hammer Cult in bringing about the end of Azeroth. Now while other elemental lords like Ragnaros and Alakir sided with their old masters, the Old Gods, Neptalon the Tidehunter, elemental lord of water, sided with the forces of Azeroth. Neptalon and his water elementals, along with the Earthen Ring, set out to help the captured soldiers. After winning a good number of battles against the Naga and freeing several warriors of Azeroth, the Naga attempt to invade Neptalon's realm. They are eventually successful, and the Tidehunter is dragged away, taken prisoner by the Naga. But ultimately, the plans of the fish warriors are thwarted thanks to the aid of Azeroth heroes, and Neptalon escapes at some point in time off screen. That's what was happening in the realm of water, but in the realm of fire, Ragnaros the Fire Lord is up to some stuff. See, Ragnaros is a servant of the Old God's will and is eager to aid Deathwing in the destruction of Azeroth. The Fire Lord leads an assault on Mount Hyjal, but is pushed back by its defenders, the Sonarian Circle of Druids and the Green Dragonflight. The Guardians of Hyjal lead a strike force into Ragnaros' realm, the Firelands, in order to snuff out the Elemental Lord's flame for good. Ragnaros commanded strong ancient beings of lava and fire, as well as the Druids of the Flame, led by Fandral Staghelm. The Druids of the Flame were Druids who gave in to the whispers of the Old Gods and were seduced by the power offered to them. The raid against the Firelands was brutal, but eventually the Cenarian Circle proved victorious and the Fire Lord was slain for good. And in the Badlands of the Eastern Continent, the Red Dragon Rhea Straza has been working on a way to free the Black Dragonflight from the Old God's corruption. She was able to successfully purify one Black Dragon Egg. This brought Deathwing right to her doorstep. Rhea was able to trick the Destroyer and managed to secret the purified egg away, but at the cost of her own life. The egg was taken care of by the Red Dragonflight for almost six months before it was stolen by a thief working for the Ravenholt Guild of Assassins. The Red Dragons hire a rogue to find the egg and retrieve it for their flight. Tracking the egg to Ravenholt Manor, the rogue finds the egg already hatched and its former inhabitor awaiting them. Rathion is the grandson of Deathwing and he is the only black dragon that is untouched by the corruption of the Old Gods. And as so, he hires the rogue to help him assassinate the remaining black dragons that are hiding throughout the realm of Azeroth, and eventually sends the rogue to help take down Deathwing himself. When the former warchief of the Horde finally arrived at the Maelstrom, he attempted to communicate with the elements. Thrall was greeted by the elemental fire lord Ragnaros, who bragged about attacking Mount Hyjal and in helping Deathwing bring about the Hour of Twilight, the return of the old gods and the end of Azeroth. Thrall and the Earthen Ring begin to balance out the elements and fight back against the forces of Deathwing and the Twilight's Hammer. The Earthen Ring team up with their druid equivalents, the Cenarian Circle, as well as the Dragon Aspects, the ones not corrupted by the Old Gods. After the defeat of the Fire Lord at Mount Hyjal, there the heroes attempted to restore power to the World Tree, but while attempting to do this, 
a servant of the Hour of Twilight was able to attack Thrall and send his spirit into the four elemental planes. Heroes ventured out into these four elemental planes to help recover and restore the former warchief in order to help save the world. Once Thrall was restored, the shaman, along with the dragon aspects, deliberated on a way to stop Deathwing and prevent the Hour of Twilight. Their solution was to use the Dragon Soul, but since it was destroyed at the Battle of Grim Batal, they were going to need to travel back in time to the War of the Ancients in order to steal it. A few heroes of the Earthen Ring and the Cenarian Circle ventured into the past via the Caverns of Time and were able to acquire the Dragon Soul in its purest form. And because the Aspects were unable to use the weapon, they charged Thrall with being its wielder. After the Elemental Lords were defeated, and the Dragon Aspects united at Wormrest Temple, their plan for using the Dragon Soul solidly set, Deathwing sends his army of Twilight Dragons, Black Dragons, Twilight's Hammer Cultists, and any Old God forces he can summon to lead one last assault on Wormrest Temple, in order to stop Thrall from using the Dragon Soul. Thrall is able to evade the forces of Deathwing and reach the Dragon Temple while the forces of Azeroth hold back the Aspect of Death and the Hour of Twilight. Thrall and the Dragon Aspects are able to summon enough juice to power the Dragon Soul and use it against Deathwing. But the hit he took wasn't enough to kill him. Deathwing begins to retreat towards the Maelstrom to hide away in Deep Home again. But Thrall and the Aspects and the Earthen Ring chase after him. They're able to catch up to the Black Dragon and crash him into the Maelstrom, having a final battle between the forces of Azeroth and the Fallen Aspect of Death. In the end, Thrall is able to use the Dragon Soul on Deathwing one last time, finally destroying the Destroyer, preventing the Hour of Twilight, and ending the Cataclysm for good. The usage of the Dragon Soul used up all of the Aspect's deity-like abilities, permanently reducing their power. They give their guardianship of Azeroth over to the mortal races, and Thrall, along with everyone else, sets off to rebuild whatever they can, and start a new era for their world. And that about does it. I skipped some things here, changed some things there, but all in all, this is all the lore you needed to know about World of Warcraft Cataclysm. I know there are some characters who get their start in this expansion who have more major roles coming up, and I know that once again I have cut the troll raids from the video. And that's because the next lore video will be about the trolls of Azeroth, and all the lore that goes along with them. Thanks for your patience, and hopefully you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you'll enjoy what's coming up next. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and take it easy.